Listen, right? Listen. It's not holding if it's books, and it's not an addiction if it's books. Actually, books are really good by their nature, and you shouldn't be so judgmental, and actually you have an addiction, and you have a problem, and you're a holder. I, uh, I, I think I've really, I've really messed up. I, I bought too many books. I bought, I bought way, way too many books. Physical copies as well. We're not talking about Kindles. I, I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna get into that. That's a whole other thing. Because there's so many books, what I'm gonna do is separate them by genres. Really the genres that I read are sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. Lots and lots of horror. So I think I'm gonna start off with showing you the sci-fi books that I've purchased, then the fantasy books, and then I'm gonna show you the horror books. And with the horror books, it's a, a nice mixture, I think, of classic horror and much more modern, what I would say, think of as kind of gritty, maybe a bit more disturbing horror. Yeah, let's get started. Let's start off with sci-fi. Okay, so let's start off with these two little beauties, and they are a psalm for the wild built and a prayer for the crown shy. So these are um, a, a monk and robot books. Uh, they're part of a series. I just, I, I don't want to spend too long on each individual book, but straight from the from the get-go look at this hopefully the light isn't shining on it too much like the artwork is so nice i bought these in a uh, hard copy uh, hard copy hardback um but yeah you can see here like they're, just, they're really short reads the way that i like to think about these books is if reading stephen king feels like sitting around a campfire and telling your friends scary stories. And Dan Brown, reading Dan Brown feels like watching a movie, watching an action-packed, in-depth movie. Uh, these books feel like taking a little trip, you know? A little, a, a little weekend getaway. Uh, they're really nice, wholesome, little bite-sized books and I really enjoy them and I really, I really just like the look of them on my shelf as well. All right, that's the first two. Next up is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. I've also read this one already as well. And again, it's just one of these nice little shorties. Uh, you can get through it in an afternoon. And this is a really fun story about a, a security robot who kind of malfunctions and becomes fully aware. It calls itself Murderbot. <laughs> After Murderbot gains sentience, it develops a taste for soap operas and human entertainment, but also it's kind of funny because it's socially awkward around humans. Because now it's sentient, it's kind of, uh, with self-awareness comes self-consciousness. And so it just it never wants to be around people, but its job is to protect a, a group of scientists as they conduct their research on another planet. It's really a lot of fun. And also it's the first in a series, I believe that there's already been seven books written, and I think they all are, are quite short. So I think this is the shortest one, but um, yeah, I've dipped my toe into the world of murder bots and um, I'm really interested. It's not heavy on the narrative, but it's uh, it's definitely worth a read. It's more of a character study than anything else. But yeah, it's, it's, this is a good one. I would recommend. Okay, so next up in my sci-fi purchases are this collection, this series, um, and this is by Stephen R. Donaldson. Um, I, I f the reason that I bought these is purely on a recommendation that I saw online. I don't think it was in my comment section. Uh, I, I think it was in a, maybe a Reddit group that I'm in. And they said that this was really, really super dark, grim dark sci-fi, if you can imagine. So if any of you have read, uh, it's, it's called the, the Gap series. Um, and I believe the first one is the real story. And then uh, it goes into these other ones here. Um, uh, the Dark and Hungry God Arises, Forbidden Knowledge, This Day All Gods Die, and Chaos and Order. Um, so I am, I'm looking forward to reading this series, but I'm also terrified. And one thing that I was told is that the first book in this series is 
like the darkest of the whole series. So you need to you need to grit your teeth, you need to get through it because it's almost as if even though you might enjoy grim dark, uh, this is this is like heavy, heavy apparently, uh, especially the first book. So yeah, looking forward to uh, to, to reading this collection here. Um, and I, I bought all of these secondhand as well. I just found the whole collection. So, you know, what am I gonna do? Next up, we've got another series. And I think this is quite prescient uh, because there's going to be a Netflix series released of this trilogy. And it is The Three Body Problem by, I believe it's Shishin Lu. Uh, is how you pronounce the author's name. I'll double check it before I actually read them. Um, and in all honesty, I don't know a great deal about these. I understand that uh, there's a lot of philosophy, there's uh, politics, um, there is uh, so, some commentary maybe on artificial intelligence, but also I believe there is an alien invasion. Humanity is forced to take some dark decisions um that's all i know it's i'm i'm going in pretty blind to uh to to this trilogy and they're kind of chunky uh but i i i mean everyone's talking about these books right they they've they've been out for for a while now and with the netflix series coming out next year I just want to be able to dive right into it. So I probably am going to be reading this one, Three Body Problem, the first in the trilogy before the end of the year. But yeah, really excited about this one. Apparently this is quite dark as well. So uh, yeah, a lot of dark sci-fi coming up in the future. Um, I also have The Parable of the Soa, which uh, is mainly focused around the effects of climate change. I believe that it's set in 2024, or the uh, it, it begins in 2024, um, and it's mainly centered around, I think, California, and there's a, I'm just reading it here, water shortage, um, and then you have Olamina, sorry, Lauren Olamina, and she has sort of heightened levels of empathy and a deeper understanding of the world. She comes to the community as a kind of messenger of doom, and she shunned and rejected a little bit of a Noah's Ark kind of uh, deal I wasn't sure whether to put this one into sci-fi or fantasy but it's got lumped in with sci-fi one thing that can't be denied as being a sci-fi is children of time and this is where the last inhabitants of earth are leaving a dying earth and following a star map that I believe was left by their ancestors uh, or, or by generations that came before, and they're following a star map to another planet which has been terraformed called New Eden. It's just as they're uh, about to land on there and they think they're gonna start a new life that I think uh, there's, there's settlers that have already arrived on that planet. None of this is spoilers, by the way. I haven't read this book. Um, it's, it's just all that's on, on the back of the book. But this sounds right up my alley, you know? I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. This one is a little bit of a gamble for me. Uh, sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel and it's I mean just reading the synopsis lives are separated by time and space have collided and an exiled Englishman a writer trapped far from home it's, it sounds as though it's kind of heady you know they're they're journeying through time and space this one sounds like one that is I, I have to take my time with but I think it's gonna be really enjoyable I think it's gonna be uh, a lot of fun so looking forward to reading this one at some point next year this is another really short read uh, from the sci-fi collection it's called the test by Sylvain Nouvelle. For this one, I'm just gonna read the synopsis because it's really short. Um, it says, Adir is sitting the British citizens, <laughs> it's difficult for me to say this, the British citizenship test 
He wants his family to belong. 25 questions to determine the worth of a life. 25 chances to impress. When the test takes an unexpected and tragic turn, a deer is handed the power of life and death. But how do you value another person's life when all you have is a multiple choice? So this one sounds really good. I've heard people compare it to Black Mirror, kind of being like a Black Mirror episode. I love Black Mirror. It's more the older stuff than the newer stuff. But yeah, this sounds like classic Black Mirror. And then the final sci-fi that I purchased recently is The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. This one sounds really fascinating. So basically, I'm just going to try and describe it. Um, there is a paradise where it's kind of hidden away from the rest of the world. Everyone lives in this paradise and they wear monitors on their arms, I think. And as soon as the life expectancy gets below 10%, the inhabitants of this island are taken on a ferry to a mysterious island known as the nursery. And uh, the story, I think the protagonist is, as the name suggests, the ferryman who takes them between the paradise and the the island known as the nursery um, and you know he's just living his day-to-day -day life and then it's time for his father to be taken to the nursery and then that's when things get uh, you know he's, he's got a little bit of skin in the game at that point it sounds like and there's some other complications in his life so um, that sounds like it's got everything I enjoy. It's, it's sci-fi, it's apocalyptic, and there's a lot of mystery in there. Um, you know, there's, there, there's high stakes for the family ties. This, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this. I would be very surprised if I didn't love this book, just based on the synopsis. Okay, let's get into some fantasy stuff, right? So these are the fantasy books that I purchased recently. The first one actually arrived today. It was my first ever purchase through the app Pango Books. If you know what Pango, is it Pango or Pango Books? And do you know what? It. I, I was a little bit disappointed because these came through, and I sh I'll show you what it is. It's the trilogy, uh, Robin Hobb uh, Assassins trilogy. Um, and these came through really nice. Uh, it's the, what do you call it? Mass market paperback editions. Um, and like the, the previous owner really clearly takes care of their books. Um, but one, was just packaged a little bit strangely and I think it got ruined in uh, in the delivery. And th to be fair to them, they offered to reimburse me, uh, g g give me uh, my money back. But I said, no, nah, it's fine, you know, uh, it's, m mistakes happen. I probably will buy another copy of this though, to be fair, because it's just like, it's just all torn and dog-eared there. So yeah, I, I hate that. But anyway, you know, more importantly uh, than the cover and everything like that is the, the content of the books. I bought these for one reason and one reason only, and that is because I was speaking to a friend who said that if you want fantasy where the, the focus is on the characters and the character development and where the writer is able to make you fall in love with the characters, which is everything I like about Stephen King really is just making me care about his characters. They said that this Robin Hood, uh, Robin Hood, Robin Hobb is, uh, is the best writer uh, that, that can accomplish that in the world of fantasy. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to reading some of her uh, work and it's gonna be starting with The Assassin's Apprentice. I'll definitely be starting this series um, next year. And I believe there's somewhere between nine, 12, maybe even 15 books that take place uh, uh, in Robin Hobbs world. This is where I need to start off. So that is Assassin's Apprentice, Assassin's Quest, and Royal Assassin. So yeah. Looking forward to these. Next up is a gift actually from my cousin, Ricky. And it is another trilogy that has a larger extended world. That is Joe Abercrombie's world of the blade itself. Um, so these are more grimdark uh, fantasies 
and apparently they're very funny. Um, there's a lot of gallows humor. Uh, you've got to have quite a strong stomach kind of going into this. The, a lot of the characters are morally gray. And so that's the kind of thing I like, you know? I'm, I'm a huge fan of A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones and everything. Um, and so I think I'm really gonna enjoy these. And I think a lot of next year is gonna be focused on Joe Abercrombie's writing. So that is The Blade itself followed by Before They Are Hanged, and then The Last Argument of Kings. I'm gonna be reading through these really soon, probably in the next few months, I'm gonna start these. And Ricky, if you're watching, thanks so much, mate. Really appreciate these. And also, just while I'm on the topic of Ricky, my cousin, um, he also got me this as well, which is really nice. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And he gave this to me when I was back in England. So thanks mate. Final Fantasy book, Final Fantasy. The Final Fantasy book that I purchased uh, just recently is The Poppy War. This is about, I believe, a young girl who is orphaned. She attends a military school in a, this is in a fantasy world. Um, she atten attends a military school and discovers that she has kind of shamanic powers she's able to communicate with her god and that gives her special abilities um, everyone kind of undermines and underestimates her and she uses these powers to hopefully save herself and her community um, going into what is i believe the third poppy war so yeah really excited to read this one i mean th this one is just so well known now i just see it popping up everywhere and i had to see what the hype was about so looking forward to diving into the world of the poppy war as well and that is all of my fantasy books not as many fantasy as sci-fi but sci-fi pales in comparison to the number of horror books that I've purchased and I'm going to try and pick up the pace a little bit and go through these a bit faster rather than giving a synopsis for all of them. Uh, I, 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 well, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do my best. Okay, let's try and do like a little speed, speed round through uh, the classic horror that I've purchased. So classic horror, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, I think most people know what that's about. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. By the way, the artwork, I know it's supposed to be a speed round, right? But look at that, the artwork is really cool in these copies, really nice. Uh, the Call of Thulu uh, by H.P. Lovecraft. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. This one, I don't know if it technically qualifies as classic horror. Um, it's more cosmic horror, but then again, that's the same for H.P. Lovecraft, right? So uh, The King in Yellow, uh, cosmic horror, uh, written by Robert W. Chambers. Meant to be very eerie, very spooky, uh, very surreal, and sounds right up my street. Next one is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. Again, not classic horror, not horror. Uh, more of a murder thriller, but I, I think there are horror elements. This is actually the inspiration for the movie that just came out recently called, I think it's A Murder in Venice or something like that. Uh, is it, does it say in the back what it's an inspiration for? I think, it, yeah, it's, it's the one that's A Murder in Venice, I think it's called. And, um, oh, sorry, a, a Haunting in Venice, it, it says at the bottom. This isn't classic horror, I don't think. It's just the complete, poetry of Edgar Allan Poe. I don't really read that much poetry, but I saw this one on sale and I thought I'd dive into it. Nice to season to read Edgar Allan Poe. Then we've got The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. And then we've got the, the classic of classics, right? When it comes to horror, Dracula by Bram Stoker. I'm mostly interested when it comes to all of this classic horror in how well it holds up in the modern times? Um, and is it now relegated to just being inspiration for the horror that we enjoy today? Or could these books be released today and still be as massive as they were back then? Let's get into the more modern horror and try and speed through all of that as well. Because I've, I've got, 
still still a few books to go you know so um yeah let's let, let's dive into that so a lot of you that watch this channel will know that i really enjoy reading stephen king maybe too much um and that's kind of a new endeavor for me honestly i hadn't read that much stephen king before last year before this this last year um so what i decided that i would do is give his son a chance as well and see if some of that genius is rubbed off on Joe Hill, um, 20th Century Ghosts. Uh, this is a collection of short stories and then Horns, which I believe was also adapted into a movie with, it's not Elijah Wood, it's the other one, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, we've got Nosferatu, I believe, I mean, look, it's like a license plate, it's clever, right? Nos for A2, Nosferatu, very clever. Um, and I believe that this one is set at Christmas time in Christmas land, so it only makes sense that I'll be reading this one in December this year. Another classic that I always hear about from Joe Hill, Heart Shaped Box. And this one came through the mail as well, and it's not a great copy either. Oh no, oh no. Uh, it's Black Phone by Joe Hill. By the way, all of these came through the mail and they're all perfect and fine and there's no problems with them. They all came through uh, thrift books, all of the Joe Hill books did. This is the only one that was damaged. So it's fine, you know, they're so much cheaper and it, it just makes me feel better not to give all of my money to Amazon. Okay, so this is gonna be the final push. This is the last of the horror that I have available. Next is Find You In The Dark by Nathan Ripley. This one sounds like a great cat and mouse story. This is about a man whose sister was taken out by a murderer some years ago and now he feels kind of bitter towards the uh, towards the police and so he goes after I, I think cold cases of unsolved murders and he hacks into police files and then he does his own investigations. He finds the bodies that were never uncovered and then he calls the police and he mocks them. And he says, look, look how, look how I can do your job better than you. This is how you failed me, you know? Um, but then on one of his investigations, he finds a fresh body. And so when he calls the police, uh, one of the police officers, someone who's uh, rising through the ranks, one of the female detectives, uh, she starts to question uh, this guy who she calls the finder. She wonders if he's maybe responsible and if he isn't already responsible, is he going to be responsible for some uh, murders in the future? Of course, I like the sound of all these books and I wish that I could just read them all today. I wish I could just pick up all of them and just go but you know, kind of like that robot and batteries not included. Oh man, I wish. This one is a psychological thriller. It's The Visitors by Catherine Burns. And uh, again, this one just sounds fantastic. Basically, it's about a brother and sister who are living, I think they're in England, in, the no in Northern England. And they're living in this kind of crumbling old, man old mansion. Um, she is described in the synopsis, uh, the, the protagonist, as a spinster who still sleeps with her teddy bears. And she just lives alongside her brother, John, and, and, and she's following all of his rules. Uh, she's kind of childlike, it sounds like. Um, and she ignores all of the warning signs of noises coming from downstairs, seeing women's clothes in the laundry that it doesn't belong to her. And then when one day her brother suffers a heart attack, she is then forced to come to terms with everything that he was doing. And uh, yeah, it kind of all kicks off from there. Yeah, another really tasty sounding psychological thriller that's gonna damage me, I can't wait. This book, Sour Candy, I've actually already read this one, another tiny little, tiny little morsel. Um, and this is, oh, how do you explain this one? So uh, the only way that I can explain this without giving any spoilers is that the main character, Phil, 
has a son. To look at them, you would think, oh, you know, they're, they're a father and son um, out on a walk in the park, uh, feeding the ducks. Seems as though maybe the little boy's uh, quite demanding. He's crying a lot and, you know, Phil doesn't seem to really be in control of this situation. But Phil only met this boy a few weeks ago and he's kind of a prisoner. And again, that's not a spoiler. Uh, that is that is the, the premise of the book. It's, it's, a, it's a freaky little thing, you know? Okay, so this next one by Anaya Alborn is Seed. A, a little boy grew up in Georgia and then he left uh, he kind of hitchhiked out of there as a young boy, leaving his old life behind and starting a new life with, uh, with, with and, and raising a family and, you know, kind of living out the American dream. And what he was escaping is described as uh, a pair of staring eyes of gnashing teeth always looking up at him, watching, always there. Now it's back and it's there to haunt his family. So, um, yeah, looks kind of creepy as well. <laughs> I spoke before about Nosferatu by Joe Hill and how it was like a Christmas horror that I'll be reading in December. This one too, uh, The Visitor by Sergio Gomez. It's another short story. You see, I like these short ones as well, you know, especially with all the Stephen King I read when it's like The Stand, Wizard and Glass, you know, it's these, these big tomes. Uh, it's nice to fit these in as well. Um, but yeah, The Visitor is a I believe it's in Indiana, is that right? Yeah, it's a snowstorm in Indiana, one of the worst that the state has ever seen. And a bunch of people are all huddled inside a diner. They can't leave the diner, it's too cold. And the temperature keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. Something weird's going on. And then another person or person walks into the diner. And this is not like everyone else. This is a visitor and uh, they have to spend Christmas defending their lives against this entity. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Next up is Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach or Dathan Auerbach. Um, I was told to go into this one blind, basically. Just don't try and learn too much about it. All that I know about it is that the chapters slowly uncover a childhood of a young boy as, as, as a man he's thinking back to his childhood and each chapter uncovers a new mystery of the games he used to play and so I'm not going to read anything else about this any reviews or anything I'm just going to go into this one cold so I can't give you too much more information other than it a lot of people really like this one and a lot of people find this one to be terrifying. This is another book by Ania Alborn, Brother. So I have two books here by Ania Alborn. This book, Brother, also by Alborn, is set in the uh, set in Appalachia uh, in West Virginia and it's about a family who sounds to me like they kidnap uh, young girls that go missing off the side of the highway. They kidnap them and they bring them into the woods. And then you've got this young boy by the name of, I believe, is it Daniel? Is that right? Is that his name? No, no, Michael, <laughs> way off. Michael is a young boy who is a part of this family, but he doesn't feel the same as his family. He doesn't take pleasure in hearing these girls screams and he just wants to be a normal guy. Uh, uh, so one day when he meets a young girl in a record store um, in a small town, I believe it's uh, Delia, um, uh, it's, it's like a small town uh, in West Virginia, he meets this girl and he just wants to, you know, be in love and be a young man in love and his brother is like, no, absolutely not, that's not what we do, is it? That's not what we do, you know what we do and we're gonna do it again. And so I think it's gonna be the struggle between these two brothers for this poor, naive 
girl who just thinks she's dating a nice guy. My favorite book of the year was I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. And so everyone said, well, if you loved I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, then why not buy Foe by Ian Reid? So that's what I've done. Another psychological mind-bending thriller. I haven't looked into this one too much just because I trust the writer. I'm glad I didn't know anything about I'm Thinking of Ending Things going into it. So I'm gonna keep it the same with this one. And who knows, can it be as good as I'm thinking of ending things? Probably not, I don't know, that was my favorite book of the year. So can lightning strike twice? We're gonna find out. Okay, next up is wonderful cover, by the way. You know, you've really got to respect this artwork. It's, I like it when something is simple, but it carries a message and this, does that, right? It's tender is the flesh. Uh, it's one of, if you remember, I made a video about titles that kind of freak me out. Tender is the flesh, definitely one of those. Um, I believe this is set in a world where humans are meat and they're farmed like meat. And I don't know much beyond that. Um, but it's, it's one of those kind of disturbing books. Hopefully it's more than just disturbing though, you know? I, I, I don't want to read something just to be disturbed. I, I, I want it to be I want it to be good in its own right, not just have shock factor. I'm kind of like that with movies as well. I like movies that scare me, but if they're just gross, I get a little bit bored um, and repulsed at the same time. And so um, I want there to be a really good narrative or I want to be, I want to be freaked out. And so hopefully that's what this book is going to do to me. Then we've got Mark. Z Danieluski. Yeah, I say Z. I say Z because I was born in London. So I say Z, not Z. Uh, Mark Z Danieluski, uh, and that is House of Leaves. This one is intimidating because this is a book where you're kind of un uncovering a mystery. I, I, again, I haven't read it yet, but I've just heard reviews of this book and that it's complicated. But look, I'm just gonna open a random page. You see? I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's it's very sparse. And then you'll have, look, sections that are marked with blue boxes. And then there's other sections that are written um, kind of horizontal, um, vertically, I should say. There's other parts that are like a movie script. And so I think with this book, there's four or five different stories that are all happening at the same time. And it's up to you to kind of piece them together and slowly unveil exactly what is happening. It's all set in this house. Um, and from the reviews that I've heard, it's set in a house that is larger on the inside than it is on the outside somehow. And it's the mystery surrounding this house uh, from the occupant and then later by a script writer who was uh, writing a, a movie about this house. And then from a tattoo artist as well, I think, who uh, is trying to uncover the mystery of this house at the same time. And he's writing in the corners of the pages of this book. It's meant to be very meta, I think, um, but it just, it, it sounds fascinating. It, it might be frustrating. I think it's gonna be one of those that I either love or, I don't wanna say hate, but maybe I'll, I'll end up getting frustrated. I hope I don't quit. You know, I hope I make it to the end. A lot of people, they, it's, it's kind of split. The reviews are split on whether or not they think it's just this masterpiece, incredible, freaky, terrifying, or mm, it's just it's a bit stupid, you know? We'll see. Okay, uh, next we've got a little bit of Stephen King because I can't go without my little bit of Stephen King. It's Duma, uh, Duma Key. Um, I thought it was the Duma Key, but it's just Duma Key. And I don't know anything about this, but everyone said, oh, it's really good. You should definitely get it. And it was in that Reddit list. Uh, everyone kept talking about Duma Key. Oh, it's so underrated. No one ever talks about Duma Key. It's so good. So then I saw it in a thrift store and I said, hmm, I'm going to buy that. And then I did. Speaking of books that intimidate me, I've got here Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. This is a rather famous 
book, a rather disturbing book. It's not a horror, I'll give you that. It's definitely not a horror. Um, it's uh, based on the historical events of the Texas-Mexico border where a young boy, I think he's 14 years old, called The Kid, um, is thrown into a very uh, horrific world in which Native American scalps are very valuable. And uh, so there's, uh, it's, it's meant to be really, really hard to read. Um, actually in two different ways, the, the violence, but then also the language makes it quite hard to read as well. And I've even seen videos about, you know, how to read Blood Meridian. And these videos are like an hour long, two hours long. Uh, that's, that's one that I've got to pluck up some courage to read. Uh, and now we're down to the last two. So uh, I purchased The Hunting Party, and I think this might be one that I read in December as well, you know? I like to read seasonally, and that's why I'm gonna be reading all the classic horrors in October for spooky season. But um, I really like Lucy Foley. I think of her as kind of like a modern day Agatha Christie. I, I really like the guest list. This one is set in New Year's Eve and it says New Year's reunion in the remote Scottish wilderness. The beautiful one, the golden couple, the volatile one, the new parents, the quiet one, the city boy, the outsider. One of these friends is a murderer and one won't make it out alive. I love a nice, uh, a little mystery, you know, especially, I, I don't know what it is, maybe I'm just biased, but I really like it when mysteries are set in Britain. I think it just adds a cozy element to it, whereas American mysteries can often be very gritty and, you know, kind of like in the city, the tough guy cop with the trench coat, he's gonna get to the bottom of the case. There's something cozy about a British murder, that's all I'm saying. And now to cap it all off, we have my last book, and this is nothing like the others, and that is The 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared. And the reason that I got this is because sometimes when I read all of this disturbing, grim, dark fantasy, dark sci-fi, all of these classic horrors and modern disturbing horrors, sometimes what I like to do is cap off the day with something a little bit nice and Nordic, you know? Just a sweet little old man going off on an adventure. And this sounds like it's gonna be a nice little thing that I can read maybe at the end of the day. Just read a few, just read a few pages when I wanna feel good. Those are the 50 books that I recently purchased. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Oh, and I hope that you got some good uh, recommendations maybe out of these books as well. Uh, and a good idea of what I'm gonna be reading coming up. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Happy reading. Have a good one.